absolutely amazing place to come. You've got best of both worlds. The wildlife here is out of this world. And literally the tiger fishing comes second. This place is really special to me. It really grabs you by the soul and uh, the wildlife here and everything that's happening around you is just out of this world. Fishing the low Zambezi here, you've got a lot of different water to fish. So the water is not as deep as you would expect in a lot of parts of Zambezi. The drop-offs aren't as pronounced. But yeah, those, those areas you obviously as a fisherman sort of know where to look for fish drain outs. Those undercut banks where you know water's draining through, it's scoured out. Those are hiding spots where fish are going to hold. So techniques for fishing that. Fish a sinking line a hell of a lot. What we've been fishing is the Rio grain weight densely compensated sink lines on the Explorer T59 weights. And you've got a 24 foot head on that line that sinks like a stone. So easy to cast, easy to load. And you throw in that line upstream, giving it a sort of 45 degree angle so you can drift it back in so the current gives you time to get the line down. And what happens then, once the line comes parallel back to you, you can start your retrieve. That gives the fly time to get down in the zone, and it's normally that first two, three strips off the bottom that entices that fish to react and eat the fly. That is probably the majority of your time, is you're gonna be fishing sink tip lines, and getting the line down, and being able to pull that fly out of the zone, and, and those fish are holding low. When the winds blow, those fish get very sulky and grumpy and they want to hold on the bottom. They're not up and around and, and feeding actively. So you've got to get the fly into the zone. What I found on this trip too was a really fast retrieve wasn't getting the fish going at all. So more of a steady retrieve, swinging the flies out of areas and just keeping in contact with that fly, just twitching it along. Holding the fly in the zone for longer is a big key. Um, you know, a lot of guys, and me in the past too, learning tiger fishing, and over the years you, you learn a lot more. Um, you don't want to just throw and rip and strip every single cast. Sure, the little fish like a fast moving object, and they'll, they'll shoot out and attack that fly. But the bigger fish, to me, is more keeping the fly in the zone, in the strike zone, for longer. So the more you can swing it and twitch it, you've got the current to contend with, which is pulling your fly. So it's giving the fly some movement. It's just a, a little retrieve, a jerky retrieve. I like a double hand because I'm in contact with that line all the time. I've got a hand on it. If a fish hits you, you've got the line to set the hook. With a fly rod, if you're going to use the rod to try to strike into it, it's too soft, it's going to bend, and there's not enough pressure to set that hook in the tiger's mouth. They've got really hard, bony mouths, and there's actually very little bit of skin inside that you can penetrate. So, fishing really sharp hooks. What I found is Gamagatsu B10Ss, and also the mustard uh, big game hooks work well for me. It's got a nice uh, profile on that hook, a wide gape, and they thin gauge wire, so that penetrates into the tiger's mouth very easily. I also like to debarb my flies, not only for my own safety and the people on the boat with me, but a, a debarbed hook makes a huge difference. It really penetrates into the fish's mouth a hell of a lot easier. Often what you'll find with the barbed hook is you set that hook but it stops at the barb and doesn't actually go through. So that holds off and then the fish will throw you. Tiger fish are renowned for throwing anything. It's one of those fish you hook, you think it's well hooked, It'll come up and jump at the boat a few times and it'll dislodge that hook quite easily. Any weight in its mouth is obviously an advantage to the fish. And yeah, the best thing is when you're fighting those fish is to make sure when you see your line coming up that you pull the fish's head back down as much as you can. Easier said than done sometimes. But 
holding the fish down under pressure, taut line all the time. The less jumps it makes, the more chance you've got to land in the fish. Another thing too is when you hook those fish, you don't want to give them a lot of line, and it's easier said than done. You one on one, hand line basically, and those fish are burning. That line is screaming through your hands and burning you to shreds. But the less line you give it and the shorter leash you've got it on, the more chance you've got to land in it. You don't want to fight that fish on the reel. You've got a one to one gear ratio on that reel and you're never going to keep up with the tiger. If it swims back at you with a one to one gear ratio, there is no way you're going to keep pressure on that fish. So always hand in line and you are one on one and you're pulling that fish as hard as you can. Sometimes those big fish are going to take line from you. It's, you're not going to stop it, but you've got it on a tight line and that's when you're going to land those fish. As soon as you give them slack, you can say goodbye. Typical tiger, all over the show, and just unpredictable what they're going to do next. The key is to try keep tension on it and lift its head up when you want to net it. Oh, oh well done, guys. That's just too special. Thank you. Beautiful, stunning fish. Huh? Oh, pound for pound. I don't think there's another freshwater fish in Africa that can fight like this, probably in the world. Um, but you're yeah, aggressive, acrobatic, and this is such a pleasure to catch. Absolute pleasure to catch. As she heads for the drop off, as they do, they know instantly where to go straight away and they find the shortest route and find that drop off really quickly. And yeah, that is just too awesome to witness.